All right, folks, this section I'm going to talk about the essays, and uh, I I'll just tell you up front, I've been called reckless before by tutors, professional tutors who know more about this than I do. Congratulations. However it works for you, it works for you. I understand that. This is what worked for me, and take it or leave it, it's just what I did. Uh, am I a PhD in education? No. I'm just, you know, I studied business and math. I didn't study education. But for me, this was just one big math problem. Uh, so I thought about it a little differently. And I've been called reckless before for giving this advice, but eh, it works. It worked for me. And if you read the reviews of the book on Amazon, it's worked for a lot of other people as well. Uh, the short of it is this. I didn't, I didn't go to Barbary and read outlines and learn the law from doing right before the exam. Instead, I learned the law by reading essays. And it sounds silly, but I read the essay questions and the essay questions told me very clearly what was being questioned by the bar examiners. So I read the essay questions. And then what I do is I made my issue list. I made an issue list. And then as soon as I was done, I had my issue list. And then I would recite the rules for those issues. And if I didn't know the rule, I looked it up real quick. I had my book and I was ready to just look it up. And sometimes I would find an issue that was being tested, but I did not have in my rule book. I would add it in. And when I added it in, I went to a number of resources to make sure that I had good wording, make it succinct, make it small, make it plain language. And a lot of you have seen that in the book already. Uh, and then when I was done doing that, I got two example essays from baressays.com that were 65s or 70s. And what I did is I looked and I saw what issues were common to both of them. The major issues that were common, uh, I hope that I had on my list. If I didn't, I would scribble them in. And then I'd look at the minor issues. If they're 65s and 70s, some of the issues that existed on alternative answers may have been missing from the other paper that could have made them 70s and 80s. So I just made a complete list and then I would move on. I didn't write an essay. I didn't do the analysis. I just moved on and I would read the next essay and I would make my issue list and I would recite the rules. And after I would recite the rules, I would read two answers, the 65s and the 70s. I would compare the issues that they had. I would compare the minor issues. And then I would take another look at it, recite the rules for the minor issues that I didn't catch. And then I would go on to the next essay. And I did this for about a month. And in that month, I covered every essay from 2010 to the current date twice. So I knew what was being tested on the bar exam by looking at what they tested. What I didn't do is I didn't read in one of the big box programs about you know, the younger abstinence rule or the bulge rule or, you know, for all of that information that's stacked up in those Barbary books, it just had never been tested. And if I didn't see it, I didn't have a rule for it. So in my mind, I made a rule list of all the rules that I saw on the exams. I think I'm set. And it turns out that I was. So that's what worked for me. Now, this, the second month, I took another step further. And uh, what I would do is I would read the essay. I'd make my issue list. I would recite my rules and before I would move on, I would get the facts that were up in the question and I would bring them down and put them under the respective elements that they addressed. And I would highlight them as I used them. Once I was done with this process, I'd look back at my question and I would see that there were certain facts that I didn't highlight. And by this point, you should know the rules well enough to see that these issues that I'm sorry, these facts that you didn't highlight would point you to issues that you failed to spot. And by going through that, I was able to add a few more issues to my list and figure out exactly what I had missed. And then I would read two more essays and I would compare their issues to my issue list. Uh, but now where I stood was I had the essay question, I had the facts, um, I had the rules and I had the facts, and I could think through the analysis. Again, I wouldn't type it out uh, because I'm an old man and we don't type fast and we, don't, we just don't have the patience for that. I would just talk through it. So I tell people all the time that I never wrote an essay when I passed the bar and they just look at you mouth agape like, how can you not do that? That's, well, that's just not how I learned. For me, it was easier and faster to learn more information to read every essay and just move on with the show and go to the next process. Another thing that helped me was with a rule book that I'd put together and by hand picking the words that I put in these rules, I only learned one version of the rule, my rule. And I didn't bounce between different books and look at the rule written in a different way. Uh, and try and memorize them in different sources. Every time I read burglary, it was always the same. Breaking in or dwelling home at night uh, with the intent to commit a felony uh, therein. It was always the same. Breaking and entering of a dwelling house at night with the intent to commit a felony therein. Over and over again, the same thing. 
And when by doing that, uh, I only I was always making myself more familiar with one rule. Uh, I would recommend that you do the same. If you have a better rule, use your better rule. If you have a shorter rule or a more detailed rule, fine, go ahead and use your more detailed rule. Uh, I would caution you on one part of these uh, detailed rules. A lot of people pride themselves on having as much information as they can in their outline. And uh, they say, you know, my outline is 72 pages. It's got to be good. I'm sure it is. But it's also too much. You're not going to memorize it, for sure. And more importantly, you want to avoid having a rule dump when you get on the exam. Uh, so, for example, in battery, you can talk about uh, different rules for, let's say, if you have a seizure. If you have a seizure, there's no intent. It was an involuntary action, so there's no intent. If the facts don't tell you that somebody had a seizure, don't write that in there. Only write about the things that you have factual support for. Uh, a lot of people, when doing a contracts question, they look at you know the statute, uh, statute of frauds, and they say, oh, my legs, I have to get all these things in here. If you're not talking about a marital contract, don't even raise the subject. If you're only talking about the G in my legs, only talk about the G. So the statute of frauds, it, it, it says very clearly, some contracts need to be in writing. And if it's any one of these contracts that has to be in writing, just write about the one contract. Oh, I'm sorry, the one uh, particular element instead of spitting out my legs in general. Uh, for anyone that's seen uh, any of my lectures, uh, you'll know that I think one of the reasons that I didn't do well on my first uh, bar exam was uh, I didn't issue spot properly. And what I didn't do is I would, well, I wouldn't see the issues in the words that were presented. Uh, what I would do instead is I would read through it and try and paint a picture. Uh -uh, that didn't work for me. And I'll give you an example. Uh, so Owen is a police officer who had a hunch that Dora was selling methamphetamine at her home in the country. And this is one of my favorite Crim Pro lectures. It's, it's kind of scary that I have it memorized. Uh, but there's so much in just that one subject. Owen is a police officer, so he's a police officer, so he's a government employee. So somewhere along the way here, we're going to be talking about standing. Uh, who had a hunch. What do you have when you have a hunch? Well, you don't have reasonable suspicion because you don't have articulable facts. And if you don't have that, you don't have probable cause. And if you don't have probable cause and Owen starts doing something he shouldn't do, well, what he doesn't have is he doesn't have a warrant. He's going to do something that's going to break a warrant. He's not going to be able to come up with an exception. If you don't have a warrant, you don't have a neutral and detached magistrate who's going to tell you what you're allowed to look for and where you can look for it. So basically, what I already know is I know that Owen is going to violate Dora's constitutional rights, selling meth out in her house in the country. What are you talking about when you mention someone's house is in the country? There are a lot of things you can go with there. You can look at the open fields doctrine. You can look at the curtilage. If you're talking about curtilage, you know he's going to get into the curtilage. He's going to lean a ladder up against the window. What's he doing? He's going to he's going to go ahead and use uh, the he's going to try and put for the uh, plain view exception, the warrant exception. Well, can you do that? Are you in a place where you're authorized to be? And the answer is no. He's going to get these binoculars up and he's going to look inside her bedroom window. Well, how offensive is that? Well, they're binoculars. It's not an electronic looking device, so are binoculars okay? It's got to pass the Walmart test. If you can buy it at Walmart, chances are you can use it. If it's a very special piece of equipment that is not available to the public, you can't use it. None of that matters because he's in a place where he's not authorized to be. If you take these sentences apart piece by piece, what you'll find is there's so many issues hidden inside of these things. There's a wills and trusts question where the testator, Tess, goes forward with disinheriting her family members, well, because she quarreled with them. And when you think about that particular question, look at the word quarreled. What is a quarrel? It's a quibble. It's a small spat or a little argument. Uh, would a competent person go ahead and disinherit their family members because of a quarrel? And that's one of the key facts you need to use for uh, your argument on her competency. Uh, also know that the facts can be gray. The SA uh, examiners will give you, they'll give you competing facts. And in those competing facts, they're looking for you to argue both ways. So in that XYZ, however, XYZ, and then you can say the court may likely. I've heard people say, no, you got to take a stand. You can't say the court will likely rule for. Uh, no, I've seen answers from, you know, all kinds of essays, all kinds of subjects that are passing grades that say just that. Some of them exclusively say, you know, basically the court may allow for, or the court may rule, or the court will likely decide. Uh, so 
use the facts and use your own English and put together your essay uh, that goes through your analysis. Okay. When I got through, uh, when I got through with putting my issues together, there's a lot. There's a lot going on with some of the essays. So, for example, in a con law essay on the First Amendment rights uh, of free speech, you know you need to talk about TPM content neutral. Uh, it was their government action do they have standing you have all these things to put together and you know you have to talk about them but how do you do it again i just went through those examples the 65s and the 70s on barassays.com and i saw how they did it and eventually i started to see that some things were clear people tended to make their essays work in the same way this new thing called iraq uh they would have an issue they would have the rule they would have the analysis and they would have the conclusion for me uh I didn't want the bar grader to struggle to find any of the silliness that I was typing into my essays. So the clear thing for me was to do each one of them individually. So my issue could be battery, bolded and underlined. The next line, skip a space and have a space between them. And the next line, put your rule statement, intentional harmful or offensive contact with another. Okay, skip a space here to indicate that I'm going through the analysis and then go with your analysis. What should your analysis look like? I don't know, it's too hard. How do I think about it? The same way you did it in 1L. Element of your rule because fact. This because that. Element because fact. And that should dance its way all the way through. It's a little bit different on the PT when you're actually talking to a human being rather than coming up with a format for a bar grader. But just a little bit different there. And then you're going to go with your conclusion. Thus, such and such in its own line. Don't get fancy and say, thus battery was committed because, and then go through all the elements again, because you just did that in your analysis. So that format, once you get that format down, it's amazing that it looks so different than what we learned in law school. But that's what the bar graders are looking for. Iraq. All right, uh, for essays, I'd like to talk for just a second on predictions. If you by chance uh, were a student of history and you saw that in October of 2020, the bar essay examiners gave you a real estate exam, and then you looked at the number of times real estate had been tested previous to that, you would just assume that you weren't gonna get a real estate exam on the following uh, examination cycle, and you would be wrong. And if you didn't prepare for it, it was a relatively simple real estate exam in 2020, but if you didn't prepare for the February 21 uh, real estate exam, you weren't gonna do well, on, and you could potentially, uh, if you needed those points, you potentially could have failed the exam. Uh, so what I tell people about predictions is very simple. Uh, study everything and over the last couple days uh, before the exam go ahead and study a little bit more hard on the things you do predict are going to be there it would be great if we had a crystal ball and we could predict it but then where would the fun be if you were you know a bar exam grader uh, the reality is you only know you're going to get one essay you you could be pretty sure you're going to get a PR essay be ready for that and be ready for that to the point that you can get an 80 on it the PR essay is one of the easier essays you're going to go through. It's, it's always the same. It's conflict of interest. It's confidentiality. There's just a set number of rules that they tend to go through. You know, you know that there's going to be differentiations between California and ABA. And I think with PR, more often than not, they are going to test California rules. And they may ask you to do both. Uh, just be ready for that. You know you're going to get PR. It's that easy. For the rules, uh, I get asked this question frequently from foreign attorneys, do I need to memorize the rules? And the answer is, yeah, you need to memorize them. That's what the test is all about. The rules themselves are all you need to bring to the fight. You need to know the law to do well on the MBE, but you're going to see it. It'll be right there in front of you. The question and the answer is presented to you. And the PT is its own separate animal. It's just a puzzle. Don't overthink it. There are pieces there that you have to put in a certain order. And yet, once you put them together, you have to look at them and see how they fit together write your analysis, write your conclusion, mirror it up to your introduction, and put it aside. The essays are different. On the essays, you have to bring the rule to the game. And for me, the easiest thing to do there was continually drum them into my head. And how did I do that? Well, I just read off my rule list, and I read it into my telephone. And when I had it inside of my telephone, I played it over and over everywhere I went. You know, you guys have heard this story so many times. You know, you get in the car, you put the rules on. Uh, we got to listen to this again. Yeah, you want to eat this month? You know, so it was one of those issues. You go into the grocery store. Yeah, first degree murder is a killing of another with malice of forethought. Everyone will stare at you. They don't know what you're mumbling about, but they just don't want to be in your line anymore. Over and over, before you go to bed at night, put them on. 
I had them playing on speakers. Everywhere I went in the house, I would have speakers playing the rules. There are few things in life as annoying as listening to those rules over and over again. Do it once. If you need a copy of the audio rules, just send me a direct message and I'll send you a copy of my audio rules. And then you can listen to me jabbering on about uh, all these silly little rules over and over and over again. But that's how I got it into my head. I just listened to the rules over and over. And it got to the point where I was reciting the rules as I listened to them. Okay. Hey, folks. So that's my uh, collection of tips on the essays. And uh, I'll be back in just a flash to talk about. Let me see what's next. I'll talk briefly about the performance test. Mm -hmm.